Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and I'm focused on spreading magic by discussing Disney. And today we're gonna go through the entire love story of Candace Flynn and Jeremy Johnson. How did they start liking each other? How did they start dating? Did they last? And of course, if you are new here and you'd like to see more discussions like this one, then consider subscribing. I'd absolutely love it if you joined our little fun community. After Candace got over Billy Clark in the third grade, Candace and Jeremy's relationship, well, maybe more of Candace's obsession with Jeremy, began four years later. Anniversaries are very important. Take June, for example. On the third, Jeremy spoke to me for the first time back in the seventh grade. May 6th, he brushed up against me in the hall. From that moment on, Candace had decided that Jeremy was the crush she was going to have for the long haul. But that would take some time to develop because she would first need to build up the confidence to get over her gripping need to spy on him when he was working at Mr. Slushy Dog or Mr. Slushy Burger. Constant embarrassment she felt when she interacted with him and of course, she would have to become his friend. I mean, she was a pretty intense crush. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, gorgeous. Who cares? <laughs> She just had some deep anxiety over what could happen if her interactions with him went sour, even though Jeremy actually wanted to get Candace's attention as well. In fact, it turns out that throughout those years, Jeremy has always been interested in Candace at a distance, even remembering back to grade school when he thought Candace was pretty. Since then, he has always had a soft spot for her. Oh, why, Candace? Nice binoculars. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jeremy even named Candace's favorite sandwich after her. If that's not love, I don't know what is. And over time, we get to see that is actually the case. Jeremy's crush was in fact equal to Candace's, but he could just keep it together a bit more than her, which is why he's the one who initially asked Candace to hang out for the first time. He wanted to explore their relationship and be there for her when she needed him. And Candace was willing to be patient with any antics that their lives would throw their way, including Jeremy's evil little sister. This positivity between them made each other and every moment with them extremely special, allowing them to go on fantastic adventures. There was a few times where they were a bit out of sync or actually too in sync where they tried to call each other at the same exact times, but those experiences were few and far between. Most of the time they were having special dates that were often supported by Phineas and Ferb's plans for that summer day. I've had a lot of fun in your backyard, but this is the best time yet. <laughs> Candace does continue to plot different ways for Jeremy to like her more, like playing hard to get and worries about why Jeremy won't give her a nickname, but she abandons those when she sees all the goodness within Jeremy. They don't need games or rituals or high expectations, but sometimes those would still come through since they were young and struggling to figure out love. For example, Jeremy knew that Candace only wanted him, but that still didn't stop him from working to surprise her with large gestures. What are you doing here? I didn't want to break our date. I just wanted to earn some extra money so I could surprise you. A surprise for me? It's not just gifts that Jeremy gives Candace though, but he also is willing to spend time doing things like dancing on television that he's not extremely comfortable with and desperately attempts to make experiences as great as they can be for Candace. What truly begins to expose their affection for one another though, comes when Candace gets the courage to ask Jeremy to the night of the Falling Stars Girls Choice Dance, where Jeremy reveals that he has been waiting for her to ask him. But even when Candace began to see Jeremy's feelings for her were real, she still was extremely protective of him and was willing to go through great lengths to impress him. Like when Jeremy's Australian cousin is in town and Candace believes it's another girl. Candace tries to show off how daring she is. And Candace is also willing to confront girls that Candace thinks is threatening her ability to spend time with Jeremy. She even feels concerned when Jeremy doesn't reach out to her when he takes his sister to the movies because she thought he might have been trying to put distance between them. That's definitely a little overboard, but Candace means well. 
While Candace was constantly worrying though, Jeremy actually just enjoyed spending time with her, didn't even care what they were doing, and enjoyed thinking about them together as seen from him pointing on their initials at the museum and writing those same initials later on Candace's cast. The truth is that Jeremy doesn't mind and actually seems to enjoy a lot of Candace's eccentricities. He likes how unique she is and doesn't care that she tries to bust her brothers. Typically, Candace calms down quite a bit when Jeremy is around, when Phineas and Ferb are creating something fantastic. But when she has to go do her thing, he is just happy for her. Sorry, Jeremy, I've got to bust my brothers! Ah, uh, that's my girl. But Candace's overprotective nature does worry Jeremy at one point. When Candace follows Jeremy all the way to Paris when he was traveling abroad and saw him with other high schoolers, he does seem a little confused why she wouldn't have faith in his dedication to her. He does seem a little confused why she wouldn't have faith in his dedication to her and actually declares what his intentions with her were. I would hope my girlfriend would have a little trust in me. Jeremy, you said the G word. But while Jeremy didn't appreciate Candace's insecurities when it came to how he interacted with other girls, he did know that he wanted that wild redhead in his life and was even willing to come back early from his trip to come be with her to give her their first kiss. I don't know if that's necessarily sound advice. I mean, if you're on a trip a few hundred miles away and you aren't dating yet, you should probably just wait until you fly back to visit that person you care about. But hey, romantic gestures do have their place and Jeremy definitely made his move to begin dating Candace. They were officially a couple, but of course, everything wasn't perfect all of the time still. There were still moments like when Jeremy complimented Ferb's cousin on her accent, where Candace would spiral out of control, but she would always realize that Jeremy cared about her no matter what. Jeremy really accepted her and didn't need her to be a fine lady or a reasonable person all of the time. Of course, Candace supports Jeremy's music, but she also tries to scramble to figure out why Jeremy even wants to date her in the first place. And we never actually get to hear what it is. I'm sure it was some cutesy and romantic thing, you know, classic Jeremy with those long random romantic speeches definitely isn't something I awkwardly do with my girlfriend. <laughs> And even though Candace is an extremely loving girl, she worries that he will become too mature for her since he's a year older than her. But it seems that Jeremy's stuck with her. After being more formally introduced with Jeremy's family, Candace is able to make fantastic impressions by showing off who she was and working together with Jeremy. Candace, you made our family whole again. Be good to her, Jeremy. This one's a keeper. <laughs> So dad, what do you think? She's a lot like your mom. Jeremy and his family had accepted Candace as she was, and Candace continued to show how much she loved Jeremy through an extremely personal and intricate birthday scrapbook. They were slowly coming together as a fantastic partnership. That also meant that Candace couldn't hide anything from her boyfriend anymore, including the occasional hygiene purchase and flatulence. Nothing you do could be that embarrassing. Oh, Jeremy. Candace? Was that you? It's a normal bodily function, Jeremy. Get over it. Wait, wait, I thought it was cute. Once the summer is done, Jeremy and Candace continue to date. On Christmas, they give up things they loved to get something special for the other. On New Year's, Jeremy explains that he loves Candace just the way she is, and we see them share their second kiss. And we even find out from one of the showrunners, Dan Pobenmeyer, that they got married and had three children together who were named Xavier, Amanda, and Fred. Through all the hysteria, insecurities, and mayhem came a relationship that was built on trust, acceptance, and empathy. Candace and Jeremy had their weird times and their awkward times, but everything led them to a romantic, deeply fulfilling, and happy relationship. But let me know down below what your favorite moment was between these two lovebirds. Also, make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.